Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Do you guys participate in Follow Friday? No. <laughs> 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 mm, got some opinions here. Yeah, exactly. What's that? Uh, well, that was something that was uh, created by Miha Baldwin. So, Miha, tell us, how did we measure online influence? Sure. So, uh, <laughs> so the only sort of big puffy thing in my presentation is me. <laughs> Let's talk about this. So we started with Ignite Gnome decks. I decided that I'm going to do an Ignite Miha because I only have 10 minutes. And this is why. Eight minutes. Awesome needs eight minutes. There'll be only 20 slides. First four don't count, so don't ca start counting yet. And then every slide will be 24 seconds because that's what Jack Bauer says. <laughs> so I started off um, online. I've been online for a long time. About the middle of 2007, I started really trying to get involved online. And one of the first things I did was I wrote a post saying that I wanted to be the number one douchebag on Google. And it picked up a little bit of steam to the point where I became the number one douchebag on Google. And in fact, if you type in number one douchebag on Google, it's me. Um, I got bored with that, and so I decided that I was a fashion icon, and so I started something called Miha Chic, and got a lot of pictures and photos of me dressed with all kinds of various t-shirts and a pink hat. And that went along really well, so people liked it. And then I sat here in Gnome Dex last year and realized that I was pretty much a dumb motherfucker and, <laughs> and realized that, you know, there's a lot of people that know more than me. And I started getting involved with Twitter and all the social media things that were out there. And then last January, I sent this. And that's how it all started. I sent a tweet because two of my friends, Jeffrey and Danny, were in a battle to see who could get to 1,000 followers first, and they kept asking me to tweet out, follow one or the other, and every time I did, they would lose followers. And <laughs> I realized that, that I wasn't that good at this stuff, and so I sent out that tweet. And I sent that tweet out, and then I sent a tweet, uh, tweet to three or four of my friends and said, would you mind retweeting it? And of the three or four, most of them did. And I have to give a lot of credit to my friend Andrew Hyde, who at the time said, I'm a little worried about whether that'll become spammy or not. And I said, oh, no, it'll be fine. <laughs> so, so in retrospect, I have to say, Andrew, you were right. Uh, <laughs> which actually sucks, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, if you think about it, like Follow Friday is really just about recommending your friends, which is what we do in real life. We sit down and we say, hey, Andrew, I'd like you to meet my friend Jeffrey. He's a really cool dude. Andrew says, meets Jeffrey, says, hey, Jeffrey's a cool dude, and then turns out that they become friends. That's all I meant to do. And yesterday, 300,000 of those tweets went out, of which probably 299,000 or more people saying Fall Friday sucks. <laughs> so anyway, all of that made me think a lot about online influence. And people started to say, man, you have this great online influence, which I never really understood because I don't get what influence was or what it was to be awesome. And so I thought to myself, what is online influence? And how does one become awesomer? Because I am awesome, so I just, I'm awesomer. <laughs> Sorry. My mom likes that joke. Um, so I take a look at it and I said, there's three steps to figuring out what online influence are. First, we have to define what on influence is. We have to in identify those components and then we have to provide a formula. Now, I'm a little worried about giving this presentation here because you guys, if you remember the slide before, I was really stupid, everybody in this room is really smart. So if anybody is a mathematician in here, I made this up. <laughs> Influence is the implicit or explicit effect of one thing or one person on another thing or person. That's all it is, right? By the way, that's my DNA back there. It's a really cool company called DNA11. Uh, this line right here says that I'm a male, which was good. I'm not sure what these other, I think this one's intelligence. I think that one's penis size, but I'm not sure. So if you think about it, right? Influence, going back to what we're trying to be smart here, is influence is one person influencing one person about one thing. That's it. Every single person in this room has been influential at some point in their life. If you pick up a rock and you move it, you've influenced that rock. So think about it. 
So now we define influence. Woohoo! So what are the three components of influence? The three components of influence are trust, branding, and expertise. I'll explain each one. You know. So let's start with trust. Trust is the creation of an expectation that person A will always do what person B expects. If person A expects that you're going to be a shithead, and you're always a shithead, there's trust built. <laughs> right? If I trust that you always cut me off in traffic, and you always cut me off in traffic, we have a trust relationship. It's awesome. <laughs> That's all trust is. Really simple stuff. This is a great equation I found online, right? Again, math people, please don't yell at me. What's interesting here is that three of the four elements include the word expectations. And what's really interesting is that this has to equal one. Right? Everything all together, the numerator and denominator have to equal one, so trust has to be one, which I think is pretty cool. Again, math people, don't yell at me. Let's go into branding. This is the part that I found most interesting. If you have personal branding, which a lot of people talk about, and there's a lot of books written about, and there's a lot of stuff about personal branding. But if you look at the difference and you take a look at corporate branding, corporate branding is about feeling. It's about emotion, right? Coke is it, the Pepsi generation. Personal branding is about trust. That's the difference. That's all it is. I hate that personal branding, the concept of personal branding has become this thing where people have created careers around teaching other people how to build their personal brand. Because at the end of the day, it's just be trustworthy. You want to build a personal brand, just be you. That's it. There's really nothing more to it. And if you ever spend a dollar on anybody that's going to teach you any more about personal branding, sorry, but you're dumb. That's it. That's all personal branding is, right? You are what people expect you to be. You build trust between you and another person, and you've built a personal brand. As much as you want to be, and, I, and I'm diverging slightly here, but this is, I think, a really important point. As much as you want to be different online because you work for a company, that moment is not your personal brand. That's your corporate brand. Right? Your personal brand can never be more than you. I think that's an important thing to think about. All right, let's talk about expertise. Here's what's interesting about expertise, and I found this fascinating when I made it up. <laughs> Knowledge is gained. Expertise is given. Everybody in this room is smart. Everybody in this person has gained knowledge of some sort. Everybody in this room is not an expert until somebody looks at them and goes, man, you're an expert about that. That's it. Right? Think about it. What's the difference? What's the added element here? Trust. As soon as somebody trusts that you know about something, they think of you as an expert. So the word trust comes back. All right, so now we've identified those components. So here's the formula. Brand, which is really being yourself, which is an element of trust. Expertise, which is knowledge plus trust. And then trust. I didn't know how to make the little thingy, so I just made it that way. What's important here is that reach doesn't matter when it comes to influence. If you go back to the beginning, right, influence is about a one-to-one -one relationship. Reach is just a multiplier. If you think about it, there's three elements at the end of the day, right? Audience, they talk about audience. Audience is how many people you can talk to. But the most important thing, right, is how many people listen. And the only reason why people listen is because they trust you, right? And they trust you because you have knowledge that you're sharing, that they like and they trust and blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, it's all about trust. So we've done our formula for influence. So how do we build online influence, right? That's just part of this, is how do we become more awesome? I really look good. <laughs> All right, so I have three rules of blogging, and I learned this back, and I really didn't start blogging until 2007. Um, and when I started blogging, I wanted to lose weight as a blogger, and so I started doing fat blogging, and I started looking online and finding other fat bloggers, and I found this dude, Jason Kalkanis, and because he started it, he actually trademarked the term, I believe, and I left a comment, and I thought it'd be fun, and, and until maybe two weeks ago, uh, that was the first time Jason and I ever shared a conversation. Um, and I realized that blogging wasn't about attracting other people, the blogging was about me. It's probably the most arrogant, conceited thing you can ever do is blog. 
right? But it's the most positive thing too because it's the one area that I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. And if people are interested in it, then people are interested in it. So I came up with these three rules. Write like nobody's reading. If you want to blog honestly, write like nobody's reading. If you start writing for an audience, and I know this is the opposite of what you know, professional bloggers talk about, and I'm not talking about making money blogging, because I've never made money blogging, is if you write like nobody's reading, you will write honestly. And if you write like nobody's reading over time, people will trust what you're writing more because it's true and it's authentic, right? Write when you want to write. If you end up writing on a schedule, you end up getting into a situation where you're forcing yourself to write and then number one sort of goes away because now you're worried about what people think and then you're writing and it comes out crappy. And then number three, which is my favorite moment, was the exact moment when I was walking down the street and I saw something and I thought to myself, man, that'd be a good blog post. And that was the moment I realized that I was a blogger. That was it, exact moment. And I bet you 99% of the people that are bloggers in here and that love to blog remember that moment. They remember the moment when they exactly remembered that they felt that they were bloggers. And why is this influ goes to influence? Is because if you're you, this goes to building your brand, right? If you write like nobody, if you write like nobody is reading, eventually people will read and your authenticity will be taken as truth and people will love what you have to say. Become, in become involved online, right? We heard from Drew, um, not to be, I'm not pandering, I actually had this slide in before him. In fact, I think it was before he got cancer that I put in this slide, just <laughs> ahead of the game. <laughs> so it's important, right? There's actually, there's actually evidence that political um, candidates that get involved online are more likely to garner larger support. So if you get involved online, if you're politically active, and you're politically active online and offline, you have a greater level of influence over the world that you live in. So it's important to get involved. And what does that involvement mean? It's the stuff that you all know. Go comment on a post, right? Twitter's a great way to get involved. Um, don't do Follow Friday, apparently that's a bad thing. Um, kidding. The, uh, the importance of involvement is that you're building a community. You cannot get involved as a person of one. You have to be involved within a community. The greater involvement you have within a community, the more likely that people will react to you and tell you when you're not being authentic. The best part of a community is feedback. That's the part that most people forget, is that the best part of community is feedback. And if you're trying to better yourself, the reality is, is that what you should do is you should listen and learn about the things that you need to change. You should evaluate those moments and that pieces of information, and then you should change them. In the blogging community and on Twitter, we have a lot of conversation about what we want to change. We have very little conversation about what we have changed. Right? You want to be influential. You want to be awesome. Talk about what you changed, why you changed it, and allow other people to learn from that. That goes to content discovery and filtering. I'll go fast now. I'm going to speak really fast for the last two slides. I overdid it. Be a human filter. If people trust you and you bring them pieces of information that are interesting, then people will listen to you, right? And that's how you can apply influence to other people. Aggregate knowledge on your blog. Be the, be the place where people come to for knowledge and education. And you'll apply influence. And if you want to get in touch with me, there you go. Ta-da.